So hungry, so hungry, and now I'm on the highline. Phone sex with ya. Let's talk about eggs, baby. Let's talk about ham and cheese. Let's talk about bubbles and tongue. Let's talk about eating lunch. Let's talk about mimosas. <laughs> On me going down. Cause you know I'm about to buy brunch at your breakfast spot. <laughs> I don't have it's a lunch of the Huh? You in your Yeah, might as well. Let's talk about eating lunch. Let's <laughs> talk about mimosas. <laughs> On me going down. Cause you know I'm about to buy brunch at your breakfast spot. <laughs> I don't have it's a lunch of the Huh? You in your Yeah, it might as well. Wait, that was recording? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I told them I'm gonna try to have a so I'm gonna tell that person. Well, what are you doing over there that's so important? <laughs> your job? <laughs> <laughs> what what a quick <laughs> Niggas got work? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> But do yeah. they pay you like me pay you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We couldn't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, what the? <laughs> oh, shit. That's oh, shit. Y'all might. You're ready for me. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds great. I feel like. Yeah, and I'm at a better, like, remember how we were just explaining to the class that we don't have to be that close? And we're both close. I feel like way. right here, I sound so clear. Yeah. <sighs> but it pops. Ooh, text message. Boot cheese tomorrow. Hey. Hey. And welcome back to another episode of the How Did I Get Here podcast. Podcast with positivity, progression, and helping you, Spencer Cephas, find his own path. Can't do the whole government out there. <laughs> I'm your co-host, Jake, Mr. Brown, Broken Ugly. Hey, it's your boy, Spence. Well, strategist. Bro, you gotta sound more excited, though, when you do... I, I still don't understand how I'm supposed to introduce myself. Like you, you hear how I do it. Yo, it's Mr. It's the J- I didn't die. <laughs> yes, King. Yes. yes. <laughs> Bro, it's good to be back in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you we talk loud. Like, you can take an extra slot. We, 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 we done lost all type of recording etiquette. We haven't done this in a while. It's been. It's been Did we push been. record? Yeah. The red light. That's why I just said the nigga clap. Nah. You'll see. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we? <laughs> we speak in French? <laughs> Shit. Yo, this is the first time we've done this since the live episode. That's wild. It is. And it's great that we're talking about consistency because... <laughs> we ain't been consistent. <laughs> oh, so back. Before... I mean, what's new? <laughs> I have um, a question, but... Shit. I'm a championship coach. Okay. Okay. Um, um, my bad. I'm a championship coach. Um, my niece, she was born when we recorded. My other niece just turned two. Wow. Um, I still don't have any kids. Um, that you know of. That I know of. Um, I'm still single-ish. Single. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> 
Oh uh, no, if, I'm sick. If, 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 if Ashley's listening to this right now, it's like, I know. <laughs> that nigga ain't shit. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back to our live <laughs> episode. Give us more views and you can get the inside joke. Nah, bro, but life is good. It's funny because I was talking to my boy the other day. And I'm like, bro, I, I cannot complain about life. Like, everything is really good. And he started laughing. I was like, that's funny. My life is funny to you. My man goes, nah, it's funny because I got fired two weeks ago. I was like, no life ain't good. I shouldn't be. That, that could be a necessary door closed. No, we, we can talk about that off camera. But yeah, bro, life is good. I just moved into a new house. Um, sometimes it's creepy because I'm there by myself. And I think there's like ghosts and stuff. But uh, yeah, no, life is good, bro. I can't complain. I cannot complain. What's good with you, bro? You got any new jobs that we need to know about? <laughs> nah, bro. Oh, more American. Um, uh, yo, life's been great. I can't complain. Uh, I was number one in my agency last month. Uh, well, you work like 80 hours a week, so you better have been number one. Right? Um, no, nah, it's funny that we're talking about consistency because over the last six months, I've really just been trying to laser focus on my business. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm realizing consistency really outworks, beats anything else, but you have to find sustainable consistency. Um, and I'm still working on that. That's, I just wanna go a thousand percent. And then uh, you can't focus all your energy on one thing because over a while, other things are gonna start to fall off. Like you're gonna start to <coughs> deter from a holistic picture that you're supposed to accomplish and just laser focus on one thing, which is what I tend to do. Mm. So I'm trying to do everything within reason um, in moderation. But Are your shoulders normally that high or are you holding them up? I think I'm, I am holding them up. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what. Like, I was know? stretching, yeah. Uh, is it cold? I'm good. You got cold? I don't know. I can't taste it. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> yo, you, you have a question to kick this shit off before we, uh... I do, I do. So, <laughs> um, so my question, it's not serious like all my other ones would be, but what would you do if your son was at home, kind of low <laughs> on the bedroom floor, because he's hungry? My bad, I had to. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? If I couldn't fail? If you knew you couldn't fail, what would you do? Damn. So my, my first immediate thought was like some adrenaline junkie, like crazy, like jump out of the plane, like, but I've done that. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> land in the chimney, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Climb Mount Everest, like that. That's right. Like some some exploration shit is right where my mind where it went. But then the second thing was like run for president. I don't know why. Okay. These, these are like literally the first two thoughts that came to mind with no like merit or something adrenaline junkie is or run for president. Those are two vastly different things. <laughs> <laughs> that's where my head goes. Um, I didn't even know you cared about politics. I don't, which is why it was very interesting that that's where my mind went. There are three people I do not like in this world. Police, politician, and referees. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Can we take a second? Could you imagine if you were president? <laughs> what, like, what are the first five things you would do in the presidency? Put Drake in jail. Um, you just lost it. Damn. <laughs> um, nah, the, the first, like, is this, like, serious? Like, the first three, three big things. First three serious things I would do? Listen, just three things. Like, if you, like, hey, listen, for the next three years. All right. <laughs> if, all right. All jokes aside, the, the first thing I would do is uh, free everybody in jail that has some sort of marijuana or less lesser drug Uh, ev eviction, is that the right? Conviction. Conviction. Conviction, yeah. Eviction is when you get kicked out of your house. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, free everybody that has some sort of like marijuana or small drug uh, thing in the jig. Secondly, somehow uh, get, and, and this is obviously very broad, but fight for equal, get some side, some bill for women and equal rights. Okay. And then the third one would be uh, people of color. Um, get get some. So women get some for people of color. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going down. No, because if I would have said people of color first, then women, they would have said so women are third. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think in, in all six. <laughs> in, in all six, I think those would be three things uh, that I would that I would rock with. I like that. I, I wasn't planning like on a response like for myself here. Um, I would, to echo your point, I would legalize, I would federally legalize marijuana. Um, Everywhere. Yeah. Because it's, it's legal, federally legal in some places. Right? No, it's it's legal on a state level. It's not federally legal. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, Pardon my ignorance. What else would I do? Um, tax the rich. Oh, no. <laughs> think start the purge? <laughs> I would, uh, I would probably figure out some type of free schooling. Ooh. Which would incorporate everybody paying more taxes, but would you holistically pay more taxes if you knew everyone had a chance to further their education at no cost? Um, was that a question to answer? Or was yeah, that yeah, I mean, we could. That might, that might go down the. I will, here's my thing. Like, when people say, like, yo, you're going to have to pay more taxes, mm -hmm. they're not talking to me. <laughs> you, know, like, you cannot tax me more than you are already taxed. He said, I know my tax bracket. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cool 16%. Yeah. You know, yeah. I might have uh, hypothetically just got a raise that bumped me up another tax bracket, mm. but you still like, ain't talking to me. <laughs> so when you say we got to tax more, like, yeah, you ain't talking to me. That's the <laughs> I can afford it. Yeah. The people. Um, people, people have a false perception of what taxes really are and who they affect and how much the rich actually pay in taxes. It's not a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the third thing, I already said free schooling, legalized marijuana. I want to say free health care, but is that going too far? <laughs> no, nah, because they had free health care uh, in most European places. So I figure for, in the, I mean, this would affect us, like you, us, whatever. Um, if you offer free healthcare and free college tuition, but you have to raise everyone's taxes. You're like a black Bernie Sanders. Isn't that what he wanted to do? Basically, yeah. Um, what, like, why are you waiting? Here's my thing. People are like, oh, <laughs> but it's for the greater good. And like, you are one. Are you really going to see that difference in taxes? Like, I, I understand it's going to be a lot, but like, <laughs> but what what comes with it is also like, our wages going to be higher. How's our dollar going to be affected? You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it's like, because if taxes go up, obviously the government's going to have to do something to compensate for it. True, like that's a fact. Yeah. Um, so, how much is it really going to affect your day to day life if you can get and and to your point, I could be an asshole and say, "Oh, I've already gotten education." Okay, well then let's f forgive your student loans or you know for the people who've yeah. already been educated and blah blah blah. Um, I think it's worth it. Yeah, I think uh, I think wealthy people aren't going to want to do it because that's kind of a stat. And it's also like the playing field. It, that part. Um, so then they would have to, I mean, they already sent their kids to the private schools, but now you really have to like probably pay even more to go to a private school. But they would also come out with so many different state regulations and like bills, like if X amount of students from this state go to this college, you're gonna get X amount of tax credits right. and cuts. And yeah. Um, but yeah, those are my first three things. That's pretty dope. I, I like those. 
that maybe you and I should run for something. I, I could have, nah, I'm too much of an introvert. Every time I talk, yeah, I'm too much of an introvert. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to speak all the time and have everyone just listen to every word that comes out of my mouth. Says the guy with the podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's like you have to, they literally have to pander to everybody like, well, I gotta look at the demographics of every state and everywhere in the U.S. I'm like, all right, cool. People of this education level, I have to speak in this way. To right. Cater right. to them. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to do that. I just want to be me. I just want to help who I can help. And right. Those who I can't help, I'll help someone who can help them. That's a fact. <laughs> so let's um let's transition over to this uh, consistency. Well, actually, before we do that, right? Holidays are here. Mm -hmm. Right? Something I wanted to hit on. Holiday do's and don'ts. Um, and, and I'll preface what brought this idea. So Thanksgiving has passed. I was supposed to go to my aunt's house or my dad's house, family house. Um, and I was supposed to bring the sodas. But I ended up getting like food poisonings, a stomach bug or something Ooh. from the night before. Okay. Um, so I ended up not bringing anything because I didn't go. Okay, you hear what I'm saying? Right. You like, cut stuff. I was, I'm pretty sure they were like, oh, making things. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> talking mad shit. But it's like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm sick. Yeah. So it, then it brought me, people always ask, what are you cooking? You can't come to the house empty handed. You know? So what are the holiday do's and don'ts for around the holidays? When you're going to your family, to significant others, friend's house? Is it okay to make a plate to go plate before everybody's eating? What, 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 what are holiday <laughs> do's and don'ts? <laughs> That's a go plate getting <laughs> Especially if you didn't bring anything. <laughs> if you didn't bring anything, you got the biggest to go plate. Um, I, think, I think if you're hosting a holiday at your house, you're hosting. Anything brought is like a pleasantry. Yeah, it's a nice gesture. Um, to keep it? What do you mean? To like bring something? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, I know people definitely get salty like when others show up and don't bring anything. So, oh, you just brought a mouth to feed. <laughs> like nothing to share. What was I supposed to do? I don't cook. And if I bring this pre cooked. You don't cook? Well, I cook. But I'm not Thanksgiving dinner cooking worthy. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not bringing chicken parm to a Puerto Rican Thanksgiving. I think those are also like intimate things like you and your partner can do too. Like, if you've never cooked a Thanksgiving dinner together, like, oh, we're just gonna, we're gonna stay home and do our own thing. Or maybe you help cook together or you bring it to whoever's house. But. I don't know, as far as don'ts, I feel like you can't bring bottles of liquor, <laughs> whether they get touched or not, and then bring them back. Because <laughs> I definitely know there's people who are like, oh, so nobody's touching the heads? I guess I'll just bring this back with me. Is what? that okay? I think it's frowned upon, but clearly if nobody touched it, then nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. I spent $40 on this shit. That's a fact. People need to stop being kind of Not no. <laughs> First of all, pause. <laughs> Second of all, um, what I do is I get something I want to drink. Can can y'all stop drinking Tito's, please? Tito's is terrible liquor, and it it's stupid. I, I don't drink vodka, so. Oh, well, I love me vodka, but Tito's is terrible. Um, but yeah, with me is if I'm bringing a bottle, I'm bringing something I like to drink, and I'm cracking that open first. There you go. You get what I'm saying? So I know what I at least <laughs> my money didn't go to waste. Okay. I remember I once <laughs> went to a black people party, and everybody had Henny, and I brought a bottle of Dicerone, and they were all like, "What the fuck is this?" Well, it's a cognac, and it's dark, so delicious. It was to me, <laughs> nobody else touched it. Off a bottle of Lisa Rona. Are there any other holiday do's and don'ts? Holiday do's, like what are you supposed to do during the holidays? I, like, I don't know why 
those uh those couples pictures in the footy pajamas they just bother me for some reason <laughs> so you and your lady not doing matching pictures in the pjs i don't know i mean i'm not a heartless man so like if, if it's brought up to me the right way at the right time possibly but <laughs> i'm stating now that i think those are silly they look fire have you ever seen like maybe if like there's kids involved or like Pets or dogs and stuff like that, but I don't know. Um, what else? I might make a collage with flame on my guitar. You gotta bring, if you're bringing a plus one, you gotta tell people? Probably, yeah. If you're bringing a shorty, does it have to be like, like when you, like your main, like, this your shorty or? Listen, if you pop it up, if that's not your main and y'all spending time on Thanksgiving, don't bring it. I was gonna say you might as well just make rounds. <laughs> like, yo, listen, I gotta go to this person. I gotta go to family's house. I'm trying to pick up plates and just make a day of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess. Hey, if you guys have any holiday do's and don'ts, hop in the comment section. How you feel about ugly sweater parties? I think they're fun. Um, is it just for the sweater? Yeah. It. it I have a story I want to tell, but I'm gonna tell it off camera. Um, Cause I really don't need to get canceled. Remind me after. Ugly sweater um, party. Yes, but I think that um, ugly sweaters are party fun. Ugly sweater parties are fun just cause they're a thing to do. Like it's, oh, look at that sweater. Let's get drunk, let's party. Like it's better than just, what else are you supposed to wear around Christmas time? It's a reason to get dressed up. It's just like Halloween or Christmas time, essentially. Because who really gives a fuck about Halloween? Kids? I, I don't know. I'm, I was genuinely asking because I, <clears throat> I've seen it. I don't think I've ever been to an ugly sweater party. Are you the Grinch? No, I just like don't see Like when people are like, oh, you should come to this ugly sweater party. I'm like, no. Do just, I have to wear an ugly sweater? It just doesn't look fun, yeah. What if, like, Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. What if I put something fly? I'm like, this shit ugly to me, though. <laughs> Just to be a mess. Um, wait, so something super toxic popped in my head, right? So, I don't know why. So, I feel like a holiday do, don't, depend on how petty you are. So what if, right, you was in a relationship with somebody, Y'all dated for a long time. It was one of those things where, like, your parents liked her. Like, they're still cool with her, right? So, for whatever reason, they still keep in contact. Invite her to Thanksgiving. Oh, you should come by. Just your say, parents invited her. Yeah. Okay. You should just come say, uh, you know, say hi. Grab a plate, some food. You know, we still love you. Blah, blah, blah. Well, however that conversation would go. So. No. Hold on. So, she gets invited, but she pulled up with her new nigga. First of all, she should have known not to pull up, right? Second of all, just because my family still like you don't mean I do. Clearly, your ass ain't got no business being here. She was invited. Not by, by me. By the head of house. Not by me. But if it's being hosted, it, it's not being hosted at your house. It's being hosted at your mom's house. My family. First invited of all, her. First of all, <laughs> I'm going to roast my mom for inviting her. Then... After that, I'm like, yo, you really pulled up? Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Yeah, like, and with your bitch? Cause now you're trying to make me judge. Now we gonna have to beat his ass with the wishbone. Like, nah. <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my head, but I was like, that's a that's a dope. But I was like, that could be ultimate petty. Mm -hmm. All right, so <laughs> I feel like there was some other holiday do's and don'ts, but um, I don't know. That was that was just on my mind since we were around the holidays. Um. Or the holidays. What do we? What we, consistency? Yeah. So you started hitting on something sustainable consistency. Mm -hmm. um, one thing and I think about it every day, right? Like when I was playing soccer, mm -hmm. like it's forty degrees outside right now, right? Yeah. And I think every day, like, yo, I used to work out on this shit consistently. Okay. Now I don't have to drive because I feel like I got burnt out, right? Like I don't have the desire to do that shit anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And when you said sustainable consistency, that kind of made me think of doing something that is, that you can maintain, 
Mm-hmm. Right. So hit on the sustainable because I know you kind of spoke on earlier, but I think that's a good, good place to start. So, um, just speaking from experience, like I said, anytime I want to accomplish something, I go a hundred percent into it. Um, and like going back to ties. That's, right? <laughs> that's why I like. Um, yeah, I just I will be laser focused. Like this is what I'm looking to accomplish. I appreciate all small achievements along the way, but there's an end goal in mind, and if I'm not doing everything I possibly can to put the right foot forward in accomplishing that goal, I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice. Is that realistic? I don't know. (laughs) This is why I'm trying to figure out sustainable uh, consistency, because to me, if there's a, it's like, if you're training for a competition, and you really want to win this competition, why not everything you do be intentional towards accomplishing that? Whether it's how much you eat, how much you sleep, how often you work out, and what you're doing during your workouts. Um, if you want to hyper-focus on something, you will inevitably, and I always want to so long, um, get there. Regardless of talent and how good you are, it's just like, I think you might get there, you might not get there how you thought or wanted. Elaborate on that, I guess. Um, take my soccer career for an example, mm-hmm. right? Um, I had a very, very successful career, right? Uh, but it may not have gone how I wanted, right? In my mind, a successful career was... Uh, Professional athlete, full year contracts, endorsements, yada yada yada, like the whole nine yards, mm-hmm. right? But that obviously I didn't get that when we sitting here every day. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not to say I wasn't successful and didn't get what I worked for. I still played for the national team. I still traveled the world. I still got paid. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So it may not have been how I imagined it or how I wanted it, but I still did get it what I worked for. I guess, well, did you ever have an end goal, like the light at the end of the tunnel, like I want to accomplish this in my soccer career? Nah. Okay. And and, and I think that like, to me it was just like, soccer was it. You know, like, like. Just the love and passion of it? Yeah, we're just going to play soccer until you can't play no more. You get what I'm saying? And there wasn't no like, all right, I always said, all right, you're done playing when you're not enjoying it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that was okay. that was my end. But there wasn't no like, okay, here are these five things that I want to do. Um, bam. Once you get them, you're good. You, you know? I, you just said something interesting. Um, it's not doing this like, if I'm not enjoying it anymore, I'm not having fun, like I don't want to do this anymore, right? So I guess how... How long do you have to deal with that discomfort till you know it's time? Or is that just like part of the journey and maybe you're like, ah, uh, no, I'm just not having fun anymore. I'm not saying this is you, but no, I'm just right, like, in general. Yeah. Um, speaking personal, for me it was about like four to six weeks. Okay. Um, I was preparing for preseason with a pro team. Um, wasn't enjoying that. And then I got into preseason for another three weeks. And I was like, bro, this, this is not fun. Mm. You know, like, first time in my life, I was not having fun. Now, if I would have had someone to talk to or more time, mm-hmm. you know, like, take a step away and look at the whole situation, Yeah, maybe we're having a different conversation, but I didn't. It was literally like, all right, you're here, you're either doing this or you're not. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I literally had to make a decision, like, bam. Right there, and, and and like to this day, I mean, I guess I made the right decision. Um, it worked out. Right, everything worked out, and like I said, I had a successful career, and yada yada. Everything since has been great. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say that it's like that's not how I how I envisioned it. Okay. Yeah, I, I get that. And and maybe I what I got out. Is what I put in. 
you get what I'm saying? Maybe I wasn't putting in that 100% consistent focus that you're talking about. Maybe my consistency was a different level and in return what I got was what you put in? What I put in. That's deep. Um, so that's, that's a little... Um, <laughs> <laughs> off camera. Um, yeah, I, it's just... At Verizon, I did a lot of studying on like psychology and how to lead people. And I, I studied a bunch of professionals who were great in you know, whatever niche they were in. And they all have the same characteristics. Like They all have grit. They all worked harder than everyone, and they all knew what they wanted to accomplish down to like the science of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's just interesting because I know you're not always gonna love like what you do day in day out. Like you're gonna have bad days. I guess it's when do you decide that? Man, this is you know what this isn't what I thought it was. This. I don't know what the end goal is, therefore, I don't know why I'm still doing this. I think um, <clears throat> we hit on certain end goals, which is, is huge. Our end goal is supposed to be the end, or is that like the end all be all, or is that the end of that chapter, time to move on to the next thing? I. That's a good point. I, I, I've read a book, well, I've read part of the book. <laughs> um, <laughs> seven habits of effective people and one of them is begin with the end in mind i think i've naturally done that throughout my career anytime i go to a business i figure out what's my ceiling and what am i trying to accomplish while i'm here and how do i move from next position to position to salary to whatever or leadership role um until i cap out and then when i cap out I'm like what do i do next right so i guess I don't know, I guess people would have to really take a look at not as, you know, small or insignificant as like their role in their job. Like, what are you trying to accomplish out of life? <laughs> um, go ahead. Well, it, it's funny you say that, right? Because um, I haven't, I have been more present post soccer career. Oh, yeah, right? you've said that before. Yeah, because I was so focused on the goal, right? Mm -hmm. That I was, I, I didn't know how to stop and appreciate where I'm at. You get what I'm saying? Or what I'm going for, or what I'm doing. Yep. And it's like, to your point where consistency is like work, 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 right? Do you actually have time? I think part of like sustainable consistency to kind of tie back together is finding that balance of like stopping and being like, okay, this is where I'm at. And then like, all right, it's time to drive it. Or look back, like, damn, I just did all that. All right, bet, here is what I did. You know what I mean? Because if not, you get to your end goal or whatever goal, and not to be cliche, but you're like, how'd I get here? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, how did, what happened? What led up to this? Did I learn anything? You know what I mean? Like. And that's, I think it's one of the issues with consistency is we look too forward. We grind too much as opposed to just being like, all right. And this is more so how I am now. Like, all right, I'm here now. Like, I'm gonna figure out that shit over there. If I need to take a day off, like, I'm gonna take a day off. You know what I mean? Like with the podcast, I should have put Ty's episode out like two weeks ago. But it was just like, bro, I really don't feel like going home editing. Granted, I was busy as hell. Yeah, yeah you're right. right. Moving, switching, yeah. Right, like I was doing <laughs> a lot, but like it's still like, okay, do I have the hour and two hours to sit here, do this, and like that's taking care of myself too. Because mm. if you if not, you're gonna get burnt tired, you're gonna get tired, and then that's gonna leave you not enjoying it. Being so consistent, being so like, go pro. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's like, there's, there's, <clears throat> to me, there's other things to life than one thing. For sure. But a lot of people are like, I'm doing this, I gotta do this. I Like, even with you, like, sometimes I'm like, yo, my nigga, like, it is 9.45, what are you still doing at the office? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, granted, I know you're like, you're goal driven and you have things, and I'm not trying to tell you like, bro, don't take your job serious. 
but it's also one of those things like you're gonna kill yourself. You know, like one of those like, because in your mind it's like, okay, if I'm here six days a week, nine hours, this is consistency. I'm gonna get this out of this. It's like, yeah, but what about everything else? Facts. That's, that's my sustainable consistency. That's no. my head right now. The everything else. Got it. You put or not you? I put so much time in this. Mm -hmm. What about everything else? I was talking to somebody the other day. I was like, bro, I've never actually had a real relationship. Cause like, for me, it was always soccer. Like soccer was my relationship. Like soccer always came first. You know what I mean? So that was consistent, but I was never able to actually give somebody the time and energy. Full attention. And the attention they deserve because I was consistent with this. So this was always consistent. Mm -hmm. Can nothing change that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. So, sure. um, yeah, <clears throat> so I mean, personally, I am I'm learning this uh, sustainable piece, um, just maximizing 24 hours in a day. So, where does um, motivation and discipline fall in line with uh, consistency? I feel like it's synonymous. It wasn't a trick question. <laughs> 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 I wasn't trying to stump you. Yeah, but. no. Um, yeah, I feel like. Yeah, I feel like it's all the same. Um, where does what in discipline? Motivation and discipline. Where does motivation and discipline? One thing I can't understand. Yeah. I feel like lack of motivation is equivalent to laziness. Um, and I cannot understand unmotivated, lazy people. Because, to your point, like from before, they don't have the end in mind. They don't have a goal or a plan. They're just kind of going through life. Um, it's literally your first two years of college. You have to take general studies. And it's just like, all right, I'm just kind of figuring out what I'm doing here. Um, and then eventually, hopefully, you know, two years later, like, oh, no, this is what I want my major to be. Right. Um, but I, I don't fault them. I just realize, you know, we don't see the world the same way. So this conversation is going to be pretty limited as to, like, you know, what – maybe not nah, – maybe not conversation – it's hard for me to vibe with those type of people for very long because I'm very ambitious and I'm very like, nah, I want a lot. Like, because you don't, there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't want to be around me, man. It's, it's like the people <laughs> that say the best place they've been is Miami. <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't. Granted, Miami's cool. Miami's great. Go to Miami. Yeah, yeah. go to Miami. I can, granted, like, and I'm not this world traveler that has been to the moon and back, but like, Think bigger. Like, yeah. I, I ask middle schoolers, there's two questions I always ask them whenever I start to like mentor them or whatever. What do you want to be when you grow up? And what is one place you could always travel, like that you want to go to, right? Mm -hmm. Middle schoolers are saying Miami. That's a that's a tough question for an inner city child. But that's but that's why I ask it. Yeah. Because then my follow-up question is like, okay, Miami, what kind of food do you like? Chinese food. Oh, so you don't want to go to China and see what they really eat? Oh, well, I didn't think. You get what I'm saying? And that's how I open their, that's how I open a seventh grader's mind. Not a 27 <laughs> year old. You get what I'm saying? These kids are smart, too. Um, yeah, like these kids, <laughs> this, this, uh, so I mentored these kids at Covenant Prep School in uh, Hartford. Gang, 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 gang. Go, go, um, go. And this kid comes up to me, he was like, hey, do you know what triangular investing is? I'm like, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, tell me about it. He was like, well, you know, it's when a group of companies come together and one of them buys the rest of them out and then they form, I forgot the word he used, but I was like, bro, I was not learning this. <laughs> um, and then they form this. I was like, oh yeah, there's like a, a word that starts with M that summarizes all of that. The entire class, a monopoly. I was like, yo, what are y'all learning? <laughs> <laughs> but it's dope. Um, yo, those kids are smart. 
Yeah. Six through eighth grade, like I want to be engineers, attorneys, professional um, sports players. Yeah. Um, I was just like, okay, I don't think I was thinking about this in middle school. Right. It's it's crazy. Um, Business owners. Let's let's change change gears a little bit. Now I was I was watching um, the Jesus and Miro uh, podcast, I guess, late night show, um, which is a very dope show. If we could ever get on their level, it would be amazing. Jesus and Miro, listen to us. Give us a shout out. Give us advice on how y'all got to where y'all at, so we can be on the same shit. <laughs> However. They were talking about the topic of um, financially cheated, right? Yeah. And I'll break that down to financial deception, because we agreed before off camera that's a better way to say it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna read this real quick, and then we'll dive into it. Right? Cool. Forty-three percent of adults say they have financially cheated on their partner. Financial deception ranges from lying to your partner or spouse about money to hiding things such as cash, bills purchases or a purchase according to the report. The survey asked more than 2,000 people, blah, 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 whatever. Then the next one says, uh, let me see, 43% of people have committed financial deception, 39% of them hit a purchase, a bank account, a statement, bill, or cash, and then 21% of them lied about finances, debt, or earnings. Right? Mm -hmm. I know I just threw a bunch of numbers <laughs> yeah. and everything, but the point is financial deception. Yeah. Let's start. Have you ever committed financial fin <laughs> financial deception? I feel like this could make or break relationships. Apparently, it's, what, 43% of them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't Because you're a money guy. Yeah, so it's like. Like, who's the breadwinner? Whose money are you spending? You know, like, are you spending your own hard-earned money behind someone's back? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't want my lady to tell me everything that she's buying. Um, it's like, like, she surprised me with a birthday gift. Is that financial deception? Like, that wasn't in the budget! <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like, all right, we're saving to buy a house. Mm-hmm. Okay. You hear know what I'm saying? Yep. Now all of a sudden I'm spending five hundred dollars every month on sneakers and clothes, and not telling you about it. But are you saving with you? See, this is where like now. So this is where budgeting comes in, <laughs> um, because if you set to a budget, you set to a plan. Like, hey, I want to buy this house by September. I need to put, I need to put two thousand dollars of my own money aside, and you're gonna put two thousand dollars of your own money aside. We're gonna keep building to that. If we keep doing that, then so fuck every all the other money it doesn't matter. No, but if that's like what you budgeted for, that yeah, yeah. I'm saying like if you have money for another bucket or just for fun, like by all means, um, that's the sustainable uh, consistency, right? Even financially, like you, you. I guess you could look down on your partner if you know that. We're supposed to be saving for this big thing, but you never had a conversation that really broke down. All right, if we're saving for this, how much are we trying to save on a monthly basis to get there by when? Right. I put my five hundred dollars, and we agreed on five hundred. Whatever I spend this other five hundred on, ain't any business. Facts. Um, so you don't worry about how your lady spends money. Not if it doesn't affect you. It doesn't matter. I'm also not trying to get you in. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I mean, my thing is, uh, first of all, my lady works. Hard. So she can spend money on whatever she wants. Um, but no, I mean, well, we've also had, we understand where we're trying to be in the next year or so um, and what that takes. So you know, right. we're on the same page. But I, I guess it's, to me, financial deception comes in when one of the parties isn't working. And there's like a head of household literally providing for everyone, and maybe the one who's not working has like a side hustle. That they don't, I don't know. I, maybe I need a better. I can, no, I can, I can see that. If I'm making more money than you and we eating off of me, and you are going behind my back, then that's. I can see it if there's a gambling problem. 
So like, if there's a joint, like if there's a joint bank account or a joint savings account, like if you're dipping into the vacation fund because you think you're gonna flip it on red, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's so you you agree on joint bank accounts? I think it makes sense in if there's shared bills and you like. Again, back to budgeting. If you were like, all right, cool, this is where we're allocating towards bills. Right. It's automatically gonna come over our accounts into this account, pay it, we're good to go. We good. Um, yeah, but to put everything in one basket, I just feel like that that's too convoluted. So can I oh that's big SAT word. <laughs> yes, King. Sure. Yes. 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 One? Oh, damn. yes. <laughs> convoluted. Use it is it is it verb adjective? Use it in the sentence. Use it. <laughs> um, okay, so joint bank account. Is it more realistic to say, all right, here's our bills bank account. You about to just put money in this, or all right, you got these three bills. I got three these three bills. You pay my your account. I pay my my account. And fuck it, whatever. I I feel like if you're in a situation like that, everyone should just like. And everything's electronic these days. Right. So maybe make like a general, like, if it's a house, make the house the username and then some general password. But, because what if, like, what if someone has the electric and the other person has the gas and it's winter time? The elect person paying electric paying like $30, 40 while the person paying gas is like 200 a month. Like, someone's gonna be tight there. Unless y'all had this conversation, like, hey, listen, I make more money, so. I'll take wow. utilities or like, yeah. Cause I know, I've, I've spoken to people where the head of household, you know, he will, he or she will pay the, them. <laughs> They'll pay for not making jokes and just load. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, they'll pay some of the heavy hitters and like they handle utilities and groceries. I can't imagine having so a joint weird. bank account because it's like, what if you got a hundred bands in there but you only contributed twenty? <laughs> so it's like, yo, we, yo, we looking good. Like, are we? Looking <laughs> good? So you're saying no to a joint bank account? I think it makes sense if there's shared bills, but like, nah, like that's just weird. That, I think that's like, that's taking away. At least, yeah, I feel like that, that would be taking away a lot of a person's, not identity, but like, you need your own, you need your own shit, like your own accolades. That's what your own bank account's for. Exactly, so like, what we need to join one? Like, I'm the pay the shit we be spending on. Yeah, I like that. When, I, when, when we were talking about joint, I thought you meant like, listen, we both have this one Bank of America account. Your check goes in there, my check goes oh, in there. Oh, nah, 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 <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Like, like, you got Webster, I got Bank of America. Mm -hmm. We have a Santander account that pays the phone, the, the bills. Yeah. That, that would be a joint account. We still have our own shit. Yeah. But a portion of my shit goes in there and a portion of your shit goes in there. I agree to that, like, two explanations. No, I, but then you said no, so that's why it threw me off. I thought you oh. were going back on no, I'm with it if it we're sharing bills, but it's like, right. like we're not about to just pool this shit. Like, it's like, right. it's like, like all of our shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel uh, that. Could you? I feel like people. I know people who put everything in one bank. No, nah, that's nuts. That's crazy. That's bizarre. <laughs> it's taboo. <laughs> I'm sorry, none of these are SAT words, but I think I got my point of cards. That that's fucking insane. Like, yeah, why would? I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, that wouldn't be consistent or happening. Because, like, what if y'all go separate? With, oh, I guess this ties into, like, is this the prenuptial agreement? Is this the combo? I don't know. I, I've said it multiple times, and I'm all about it. Prenup. Yeah. And I don't think it should be anything weird. Um, because, I, yeah. Because all it is is a contingency. Like, majority of things that we do, like you get insurance on your phone, why? Just in case. <laughs> so it's like, it shouldn't be weird. It's like, hey, listen, I marry you to spend the rest of my life with you, but in the odd ca <laughs> case that this goes south, what's mine is gonna stay mine and what's yours is gonna stay yours. I, 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 I <laughs> like, I fail you, but you're like preparing to fail. Are you? 
Yes. So, Did so, you, hold on. I'm, I'm glad you said this. <laughs> speaking to, <laughs> on that, speaking <laughs> to my, my Libra co-host. So you never like put all your eggs in one basket before and that shit just didn't work out? And then you start over. So like, every, here's my thing. Right, and then you start over. But we're right. talking about I get we're talking about your life. <laughs> yeah. I, get it. I get it. But here's my thing: if I don't understand, like, if we divorce, right? Mm -hmm. Why there has to be a paper that says like, you, what's yours is yours, what's mine is mine. Isn't it fucking common sense that? I brought this in, I'm leaving with it, and whatever we got in the middle, we split. Why does there have to be a paper to say it? You get what I'm trying because, to say? Because, like, there's a reason why Blake Griffin's paying, like, $300,000 a month in child support and shit like that. Yeah, because he got her pregnant. Yeah, but it's still, like, you're planning to spend your lives with these people. And going into it thinking that something happens 5, 10, 20 years down the road... There's a lot of built up emotion and animosity. <laughs> it's like, nah, matter of fact, like, I'm choosing. So it's more just being spiteful. King, yeah, King Petty, like, I'm choosing violence. <laughs> like, like, no, you want to split up? Like, guess what? Gotcha. We're married. I'm entitled to half that shit. Like, nah, bro. Because this is what, yeah. Because like, this was mine first. Yeah, like, that's crazy. I get that. Um, and I don't think there should be anything weird about it. It's like, yo, listen, what's your. We're married. What's yours and mine, what's mine is yours, but if we, if this doesn't work out, what's yours was yours and what's mine is still mine. Why is that weird? I, I, I I'm not saying you think no, it's right. weird. No, I, I don't think it's weird. I think what's weird is that we have to sign a paper to, to, to get to that consensus. You get what I'm saying? I think it's weird that, like, you have to sign a paper and <laughs> legally bind, like, yo, I'm saying I'm be with this person forever. Like, why do we, why does it have to be legally bind? So then let me ask you something, um... <laughs> Taxes, that's why. Tie it all back together. Here that's, you go. It's literally it. Um, so I saw this meme on uh, Instagram, and it was like every 10 years, like like weddings should expire every 10 years so I can see if I still want to be with this person. That's bold. Kind of like you do have to renew your license, so. Like, hey, uh, you know what? Every 10 years, like, yo, <laughs> that's set up for no, you don't want to think I'm out. Like, <coughs> like that be thing? Wait, actually, that could be genius. So, like, you know, because if it's every 10-year stretch, like, maybe the first three years is a 10-year stretch, and then five years after, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when you get to that mark, like, yo, listen, we can split clean right now. Right. And, and get out of this. Yo, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Because, you know, there's a lot of, there's people right now, and I'm sorry to hear it. I pray for you. But there's people right now who are in relationships or marriages that they don't know how to exit. And like, I'm sure some of it's financially, probably more so emotionally. But it's like to know that, damn, yo, one more year. And we good. One more year. And I can it's really, almost like retirement. Yeah, like one more year. And I can really like let this person know like, yo, this has been real. It's not you, it's me. Whatever corny shit you want to say. But I'm out. Clean break. Like you have one day every ten years, that's not a bad thing. It's like a purge. Yo, word. Yo, would you purge? I don't know if I can answer that on camera. <laughs> 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 um, would I? Or would you be like? The, have you watched any of the purges? Yeah, yeah. Or you, you could be the person out there protecting people. You could be the medic. You could be out there robbing businesses. So, I'm definitely like I'm not. Looting, um, <laughs> I, not. I would probably, if the purge was real, I would probably just try to build the safest industry place. Um, you wouldn't go to West Hartford and loot. No. Oh, I don't know. Just <laughs> have you guys <laughs> you watched the new Mike Mike Lachey comedy stand up? Nah. You gotta watch that shit. I did finally watch the Chappelle journey. Oh yeah. How'd that go? Problem Bruh. Problematic and once it's you not what, problematic once you all. state your piece, I'm gonna say something that might get me canceled, but I think it needs to be said. It's not problematic at all. <clears throat> if you actually think that Dave Chappelle is against anyone trans or gay, 
you're really not listening to anything that he said, mm -hmm. and you are part of the problem. You are sensitive, you are just looking for something to complain about, right? And so many people say they want equal rights, and he went, well, he's treating you like an equal fucking person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Stop, get your head out of your ass and stop thinking everybody's targeting you. And realize he's targeting white people. Yeah, he even said that. Like, word for word. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, people just want to be offended, and they just they just want to know, millennials in general, like, we just want to be hugged and understood. Like, I just want you to, I just want you to make me feel like you understand right. what I'm saying. Um, and if you don't, like, you don't have the First Amendment right anymore. You, there's no freedom of speech for you if you don't like it. But, um, I didn't say that to be rude. Right? But, but um, it's the truth. But, but you get what I'm saying? Like, you have to put those disclaimers for that reason now. It's like, no, it's because I said the truth, I'm wrong. Nah, bro. You so, didn't sugarcoat it enough. So, this is going to be a segue. And... Feel free to plead the fifth and we can switch topics, but I have to tell a story. A friend and I, we were talking the other day, um, drinking wine, just kicking it, and they're telling me about their new job and how, you know, they're getting to know everyone that they work with and all the different personalities, and there's one person who's like, they're problematic, a little controversial, um, but they're also really good at what they do. But... It's like they're just they're always stirring up some drama or some controversy, what have you. Um, and as I'm learning more about this, they're like, yeah, she, some, some, some. But it came out that the person's trans, right? And then I just went through a whole bunch of like whirlwind of like thoughts. And I think I got it. Because like, have you ever met like, you like come across some trans women and sometimes you think they're a little like yeah you're a little more over the top than the average woman would be right you ever like come across those okay you guys think <laughs> i'm being quiet <laughs> so but you know why you know what i think i realized is that because guys niggas like we talk shit yeah this is how we bond like like i got love for you but you know i'm gonna talk shit that's how i'm showing right, my love right. so Someone who goes from being a man to a woman still has that male instinct like, oh, I want to get to know you. I want to vibe. I'm going to talk shit because, you know, the perception of women gossiping, like, oh, you guys talk about this to each other. You know, you used to have sleepovers and do this, that, and the third. Now that I'm a woman, I want to relate, but I'm relating how I grew up relating to the my my original Southern form. Matter, yeah. Yeah. Um I hear what you're saying. I just thought it was interesting and like, again sipping wine, maybe like the red wine was going to me getting yeah. to my head. But I also <laughs> I was just like, oh that makes sense because as they're explaining it, I was like, yeah, that's a that's a dude. That's what dudes do. And this is where I think the problematic piece is, is Correct, that it's not a dude. This is the problematic piece, right? Because <laughs> I understand correcting somebody but am I wrong for saying my initial thought first and then you correct me? And then from there, like, this is what you want to be called? I'm going to identify you as that. But I feel like it's not fair when they just jump down your throat immediately. So here's my issue <laughs> to that point, right? It's like, and it almost ties in with your point from earlier. I think what people fail to realize is none of this is coming from a malicious place. Facts. You hear what I'm saying? Like, I, I, we, I, we might have said it on the show or we talked about it off camera. Elijah, he is so good with the pronouns, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That he says it just. Second nature. It just comes out. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, and I used to tell him, like, bro, I've got to get to that point, like, not even trying to be funny because there's times that I have to stop or slow down my thinking just to make sure out of respect. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the right pronoun because if I accidentally don't, you get your head ripped off. Just and, and it's like what what <coughs> what people need to realize is one, it's not coming from a place of hate or mal malice. Malice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say mal malnourishment. <laughs> it's not because I'm angry. Of malice, right? It's like this is new. And if you want to be accepted, you have to allow people the time 
to one accept but adapt and realize that I'm not coming from any place of negative manner. No, um, and you know what it is? I think because then we're so progressive and we want to make it the norm. Um, the fact of the matter is like it's not the status quo. So like, yeah, it's gonna take my brain a second to adjust right. to like what I'm like seeing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, if I say the wrong thing, listen, it's not because I'm making fun of you. I'm not that type of person. I think it's the people who aren't open and welcoming to the thought of that happening right. that they maybe their defenses are higher. And let me get this. Let me get this out. When I'm talking about sensitive people, mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about anyone of the uh, LGBTQ plus no. community. I'm anybody. Yeah. Because, and this is this is why I wrote down um, holidays, do's and don'ts. I now I remember. Somebody had posted something about um, <coughs> you're celebrating Columbus Day. You should know that you're celebrated a, a, a mass murder or something. It's like, motherfucker, what if I'm just celebrating this day with my family? It has not, I'm not celebrating pilgrims. I'm not celebrating, not Columbus Day, uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, if, you, yeah. if you celebrate Thanksgiving, you still, I'm like, bro, no, granted, is that where it stems from? Absolutely. But then there are those people that are like, oh, really? You're, you know, Jesus really wasn't born in fucking December and you're, like, bro, we, we, like, everybody just looks for a reason, regardless of what we're talking about, right, to complain. Yeah, it, it's, it's to Dave Chappelle's point, like, if you feel so strongly about one thing, why aren't you offended by everything else I say? Right. Like, no one's offended when he says anything about black people, <laughs> women, or anybody, but, like, you know, you press the wrong button, like, that's the whole point, that's, like... Like, stop being so sensitive. Like, whoever, wherever, or whatever you are, that's my, stop being so sensitive. You know what, I don't even know if it, yeah, stop being so sensitive, but just own it. Like, just because you haven't wrapped your head around what you're dealing with, doesn't mean people are coming at you. Like, right. maybe own it before you really. That's an internal thing. Yeah. Um, oh, that's deep. <laughs> that's that's deep. It's a defense mechanism. But it's like, yeah, that's not my fault. I don't wake up in your skin. I don't know what you're going through. When you meet somebody, it's like, yo, this is literally our first interaction. You're now like, from this first interaction, I'm assuming like you're this all the time. Right. Where it's like, you know, maybe you're not, but why are you acting like this? <laughs> oh, that's really deep. Um, well, shit. It's been about an hour. It's been about an hour. It's been about an hour. Guess who's back, but. We gonna hit y'all with an episode every Every Friday for the rest of the year. Okay. I think that actually finishes at 12. I think that actually puts us at the 12 month, 12 week mark. That's dope. Um, yeah. We'll figure all that out. But this was good. This is nice to get back in front of the mic, in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some, big, yo. Yeah, we got some things that we've been thanking. Um, and a couple other things that I'm trying to thank and thank it, but. You know, we gotta see how those things stand and see if those things gonna work out, you heard? Um, <laughs> got big announcements, so coming soon. You are working, man. We, we're tired, uh, we're busy. His hard work, consistency got him the number one person in his firm for the month. I won a championship, got a house, kind of. Um, he got him, yes. Um, he got further along his Lady. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, we we growing and growing. Yeah, <laughs> that's that new face for you, huh? <laughs>